Welcome back, traders and investors. We have uh, Sarah Potter here of SheCanTrade.com. She's an options and futures trader, author of How You Can Trade Like a Pro. And we are going to get a nice, soft female perspective on the market from you. Yes, I'm looking forward to talking about it. Okay, you want to talk a little bit about your site first? Sure, absolutely. And I am, you know, you're right. It is about time we hear more women coming on and talking about the market. Sometimes I wonder where all of us are. <laughs> but um, yeah, my website, shecantrade.com, is a place where I really started just as a blog uh, a couple of years ago, sharing information about trading. Um, just kind of from a point of view of someone who was an active investor at the time, as opposed to someone who was just trading full time. And then over the time, I've really progressed in my trading journey, and now this is what I'm doing as a professional trader. And how, so, did, you, how did you get interested in the markets? Um, you know, I think just like most people, you kind of always hear everybody talking about, oh, the stock market on the news, and you think, oh, I'm really intrigued by that. I would love to be able to do that myself. Um, and then just really started dabbling with it. And the nice thing is, is there's so many great self-directed platforms out there for people to kind of try things themselves. But um, myself, unlike a lot of other people, is I actually do not come from um, a financial background. I was in education for 10 years. So um, I had a big learning curve getting um, in used to the market. For what sure. did you teach? I, I was actually a consultant. So I used to actually teach teachers um, about different learning pedagogies. And so that's really why I think my blog, the shecantrade.com, is pretty different because I apply a lot of my learning concepts to the markets to really help explain how to trade and how to kind of review the markets in a really clear and concise manner. Okay, and who, who would you say was your mentor or what books did you read or how did you cut your teeth in the industry? Yeah, you know what, and it does take some cutting teeth for sure because uh, yeah, I think everybody has all sorts of lessons learned along the way. And honestly, um, I just kind of took tidbits of information from all over the place, um, did a lot of research online, um, read different books out there. Um, and I think that's really why I decided to write the book that I did, is I really wanted to create something so that if someone was just getting started in the market and didn't really know kind of where to look and where to begin, um, I wrote a book that would help people take those first, first, first steps in the market, especially when trading futures and options. Okay. All right. And uh, so now are you, how would you define your trading strategy? Are you uh, a swing trader, long-term trader, day trader? Where do, where do you fall on the spectrum? Yeah. And don't you guys find like the word trader is kind of a, a bit of an umbrella term, isn't it? Like um, even though we all kind of say we're traders, we all have very specific and different strategies and approaches to the market. So I'd say that I am a swing trader in options for sure, and I use weekly options. So I'm typically placing my trades on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, uh, and then I get out of the trades by Friday. And um, I typically trade like directionals, buying um, puts and calls, and then I also like to sell spreads, um, sell credit spreads. And in futures, I do more intraday trading. So I'm usually in and out of those um, within the day. And uh, in what futures do you trade? Um, I'm typically trading the ES. Um, I will take a look at gold and sometimes the YM. Just really kind of, I like to take a look at things. And that's the nice thing actually about trading futures and options, especially these days because the market's been so volatile, is I really like to place trades in markets where, you know, there's higher probability trades for me. And because I can kind of tra trade both um, trading tools, I can kind of find the markets that are really the best ones for me that day, whatever's trending nicely or there's lots of stuff lining up really well. And that really um, allows me to kind of make the decision about what I'm going to trade that day, whether it will be the ES in the morning um, or whether or not, no, I'm just going to focus on options and I really like this specific stock that day. So I'm really not picky. I just like to look for things that are, you know, trending nicely, looking good. And uh, in what kind of uh, risk-reward ratios do you use the minis and do you trade them in the pre-market and after hours? Yeah, I use the minis, um, but I do not trade pre-market. So I am looking forward to see what's going to happen here at 9.30. Um, certainly after what we're kind of seeing, after what happened yesterday and looking this morning, and I was listening to you guys earlier this morning, and you're certainly right. There's certainly a lot of things that are down right now. So it's kind of be interesting to see what happens at 9.30 and whether or not we continue to get that downward momentum or we see a pop. Um, 
So that certainly would be exciting. But and typically when I'm trading as well, even though everyone says, you know, oh, I'm a trader, I'm, I'm not trading all day either. I am. I actually have a nine-month-old at home, so okay. <laughs> I'm paying attention to what happens in the market about 9.30, but I usually wait for things to kind of really settle down a little bit. So I'm not usually kind of entering my trades until 10.30-ish. Oh, really? Um, okay. Just, yeah, I don't know. I like to kind of wait a little bit to see what the market reaction is to, to everything. I mean, don't you guys kind of find if you're looking at trades and looking at what's happening in the market, there's a whole pylon of activity right at 9.30, right? Everybody's in, everyone's anxious. Um, but uh, this is kind of something I talk about in the book, too. I think there's a coffee break time. <laughs> I guess it's kind of a joke, but I kind of assuming it's a reality. But sometimes around 10.30, People have had their coffee or they're going to get it or they've settled in for the day, and that's when I like to make my decisions about when and what I'm going to trade. I like to wait till things kind of settle down a little bit, um, and really you know, then you start to, to begin to see where the trend is for the day as well, right? Okay. Uh, and uh, you, you talked about the weekly options there, and you said you like to do calls and puts as well as some of the spreads. And today's Wednesday, so can, do you want to care to discuss you know, any of the trades that you, that you put on for yesterday and the issues you're looking at and what you're hoping, uh, how they play out? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, there's lots on my radar right now, which is really, really nice about um, – kind of what's happening these days. So yesterday I got into Netflix, which um, so far today or this morning looks fantastic. Um, I don't know, do you guys, I've, I follow more kind of technical analysis. Okay. I'm looking at the charts on Netflix. Um, I sold a spread at um, 360 and that was out of the money. And I'm going to pull it up too. Okay. All right. So and you, so you, now, I mean, we're in pre-market still, but things have really sold off after I got in, which is really fantastic. So the idea behind this trade, um, I did sell a spread at did a 360, 365 call spread. So that was out of the money. And um, so the idea is that I just keep all of that credit that I sold from that spread in my pocket. And then um, as long as Netflix continues to do what it has been doing so far, um, then by Friday that option will be um, worthless. Yes. And then I keep all that credit in my pocket. Okay, and, and what, um, yeah, I, what did you get? I mean, that it's pretty far out of the money. You did that yesterday. Could you get, could you get very much for that? Yeah, well, I collected, I got 35 cents credit for that. And I was actually, my strategy for Netflix yesterday, what I was thinking, and when I got into it, I was thinking, oh, okay, it's kind of rolling over a little bit. I'm going to get in for this little amount of credit. And I took a half a position uh, there. And what I was actually expecting it was to pop up a little bit. So my plan was to get in a little bit at that amount of credit and then let it pop up a bit higher, and then I was going to try to grab more. Um, and now what actually Netflix has done is just it continued to sell off. So obviously I wasn't able to get into the other half of that position. But that's what I'm going to be watching Netflix for today to see what happens. Um, I guess my kind of hunch is obviously I like to, to trade with the trend, and certainly I mean there's really no arguing that Netflix is in a short trend you look kind of on the daily and even on the weekly, um, things have really rolled over, right? So, Correct, yep. Um, I would probably be looking right now, today, even into tomorrow, to wait to see whether Netflix does pop up a little bit. And if it does, paying attention to that level, that strike level, somewhere around there, and seeing then what kind of credit might still be available at that point. Um, now, certainly, if there's any credit less than $0.30, cents, I won't be getting in anymore. That's just not worth it. But if there is some more credit that will come in because things do spike up a little bit, then I'll be looking to enter in and get into some more position size in Netflix. Same with the same idea of it expiring on Friday. Okay, so, so when you're doing spread, this, though, I, like to... I just got a question for you, Sarah. So oh, you're, sure, yeah. you're, you're doing this, and you're selling this for $0.35, cents, right? Mm -hmm. So your risk is, is quite a bit there, correct? Selling that it call is. spread? I mean, if this say I'm, I'm, and I know this is not happening, but I mean that you know that thing could go to five bucks. Absolutely, and that's why you try trade the spread, right? Because you want to have the buyback, the protection. But when I'm trading and selling spreads, um, I guess even though that there is that other level, I never let price break my um, the strike. So. If I get broken and price is getting close to where I sold, I'm looking to exit or I'm looking to get out um, one side of that spread. 
Um, but generally, the nice thing about things when you're kind of out of the money is the probability is in your favor as well, right? Okay. So when I'm deciding the level that I'm trading, I'm looking at where are those major moving averages on the daily and the weekly charts. Um, is there a level of spread I can place outside of those moving averages? Okay. And then figuring out, well, where is some standard deviation? Where is one or two standard deviation, right? Because I want to increase the probability that it won't be at that price by the time it expires on Friday. And there's just a kind of a niche area in, you know, kind of using both of those tools to decide what level to um, place one at. And as I said, usually I'm looking for more credit than that. Um, I had anticipated that Netflix was going to come up a little bit, and I was going to get in some more to to get a bit more credit off of that. But um, yeah, it continued to sell off. Okay, I mean, so you're looking at the price have. then. Like, so this is going your way. That's I don't even know what it's at. It's probably almost worthless now. Probably a nickel or something like that. So you just plan on riding it out, and then you know if there was a big spike in the market or big spike in Netflix, then if it got back to thirty five cents. You would look to cover the trade because it went, you know, it 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 started to go back and erode your profits. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, but I would never get it. Like, if I sold at three sixty and price, let's say, got up to like three fifty five, then it would be something, and I'd be looking to manage. So I'm always managing the trade prior to the level that it that I sold at. I don't want to get involved in in too much loss, right? Just like. We are all responsible traders. We need to be really paying attention to how we're exiting and how we're managing our trades, right? That's how we all build our equity growth over time. Um, so when you're trading using small amounts of credit, you need to be very careful about where the price is and where you kind of need to let things go. Just because, as you said, you're only collecting 30-some-odd cents. And uh, so you wouldn't do this like head of earnings or something like that then, right? No. You would you just kind of wait. You, you're very on top of when the big events are coming out. And so, you know, you, know, you wouldn't do this into a, you know, a Google, uh, you know, uh, you know, a Google announcement or something like that. Um, you know, on the other hand, I mean, you made a great call here in Netflix, right? I mean, you identified your level, um, you know, as opposed to doing the credit you know, selling the, you know, the call spread, I mean, you might have had a pretty good return. I mean, the thing dropped 20, you know, 20 some bucks yesterday. I mean, do you ever just look at going, you know, uh, you know, long the, you know, the 340 put or the 335 put? Because I, I believe me, I trade, the, I watch those weeklies and you really can get a bang for your buck. Are you, are you tempted to play it that way? Absolutely. And yeah, um, I, I try to stay kind of diversified and I like to use different strategies and that's the best part about options right there's lots of options with options okay. um, so really depending on what you kind of want to do that day what your risk is if you looked at kind of all of my trades in a week you'd, you'd notice that I have different strategies on and I kind of feel that's how I kind of manage some of my risk so I absolutely am placing some directional trades um, at times um, and then I'm other at times using spreads and that's just because whether I know how much am I going to be able to be in front of my computer screen that day, okay. um, how much do I really want to manage, and how volatile do I think the markets are. And because we've really seen some real volatility over the last little bit, I'm looking for really higher probability um, trades at this time. Okay. Uh, any opinion? Have you been participating in uh, the Twitter bloodbath at all? I know, bloodbath. I can't believe it. But, I mean... I don't even know what to say about Twitter. I can't believe it's gone down as much as it has. I'm, I am watching it just with my mouth wide open and just think, oh, my goodness, what, what, can it really go to zero? <laughs> yeah, well, that's just one of my wayward predictions. But uh, so you're not, so you're not, you haven't been playing it from the long side or the short side. No, I haven't touched Twitter, and I haven't touched Twitter just because when I looked and watched Facebook to see what it happened when its IPO launched and kind of the fallout of what happened there. there. These social media stocks that seem to just be coming on to market kind of come on with all sorts of hype. And then they, they honestly, they, they disappoint. There's just big sell-offs in them. So um, I guess I had anticipated Twitter to do the same thing. And um, just because it is so new and we knew that things had happened prior to different social media stocks, I just, I haven't even touched Twitter. It's not in my portfolio at all. I just watch it with amazement. Who knows what's going to happen? It's certainly pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, when uh, I am picking uh, stocks, though, I like to look for trends. And just we haven't, there's no trend yet, I guess. Well, uh, there's a trend. It, it, there's a trend, all well, right. <laughs> trend is down, <laughs> down, down, down. Yeah, it's just down. Exactly. Okay, so are you guys in Twitter? No, no, uh, I haven't. I 
never have played. I I I bought some weekly puts a long time ago. I think at like sixty five or something, and let them go. You know, just played the weekly, played the short term, and uh, I'm sure they went off the board worthless on it. Uh, but uh, that you know, that's if you're getting a, a longer term perspective on things, a little bit better. But uh, no, and I'm not tempted to buy any calls down here yet either. I mean, at least if there's maybe some kind of technical pattern, I like to look for. Uh, I'm not so much moving averages, but look at double tops and double bottoms. And uh, right now, this psychological $30 level is really the only kind of support level I can see. But uh, just get your sentiments here on the overall market. Uh, we kind of had a, a theme of pops to fade here in the market. Uh, S&P futures looks like it gave you another opportunity this morning. Uh, snuck over the 1870 level, 1871.50. Uh, just, you know, you had a nice run up in the market we're just holding hanging up near um all-time highs as far as your your long-term opinion on the market uh what what what's what's advice what's the best advice you could give to long-term investors for long-term investors i think everybody needs to kind of go back to looking at charts especially on different time frames so your daily and your weekly, even out to your monthly, and really looking for trends to see where you know things are moving. And even though over the last few weeks, I think we have heard different media outlets talking about, you know, is this the crash? Then we're going to see another crash happening. If you look back and look even at that weekly chart in the ES, I mean, there's a clear uptrend that we're seeing right now. So even though we we are seeing different pullbacks, and I think you mentioned it really nicely by saying, you know, where's the pop? Um, those are opportunities to get in. When you see things pull back a little bit, I still think that we are going to continue in a long-term trend. Uh, my target, um, I think Dennis was mentioning it earlier this morning, my target is also up to the 1900 level. Um, I still think that there's strength. And, um, and these are great opportunities to get into the ES when you do see a bit more of a pullback. Um, there is still support um, to still support there. Okay, we've had uh, Sarah Potter on, a trader and author of uh, books on trading futures and options. Also, her website, shecantrade.com. Uh, thank you for your analysis of the market here, describing a couple of trades that you're in, and uh, we'd certainly like to have you back on the show. Thank you so much. Have a great day trading, everybody.